Welcome to the Contractor's Secret Weapon Radio Podcast, the show dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, and others in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over their competition. Get ready for some inspiration, some encouragement, some proven business building strategies, and a couple of new ideas that can take your business to the next level and beyond. Beyond. And now, broadcasting from the Contractor's Secret Weapon Studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dave Negri. Hey, Dave Negri with uh, Contractor's Secret Weapon. And Pete Mitchell with Contractor's Secret Weapon. We've got another fun episode that uh, we just figured out what we're going to talk about. <laughs> just kind of how we roll. <laughs> but it's fresh. Fresh off the press, isn't it, Pete? It is. We just came back from vacation, and it's all about what you experienced on your vacation. That's it. And how yeah, we can use it. That's totally it. So um, to give everyone the, the heads up what happened, uh, last week, which by the time this episode airs, it's been a, probably a few weeks, because I think we're we're actually ahead of the game. It's the only podcast where I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> if you can, Good. I know, right? I'm kind of like, wow, I, I don't know what to do when I'm ahead of the game on a podcast. But uh, so anyway, this last week, my family and I, we went on our, our summer vacation. I got a, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. And um, w- I mean, you know, the the this is only really our third year going on vacation as a family in the summer because uh, three years ago, it was miserable. It was like three days and they were so young my daughter yeah. was, you know, I don't know, 18 months, something like that. And it, it, it was, it was miserable. So we didn't really know what to expect last year. Last year it was great. This year, another good one. So now I think I can start awesome. taking longer and longer <laughs> vacations, yeah. um, get refreshed and whatnot. So we like to yeah. go out to, uh, to Lake Las Vegas, which is, uh, it's about 25, 30 minutes from the, the strip. Um, we don't gamble. So I don't, personally care to go into the strip because it's too many people and it's hot right i mean vegas is hot in the summer it was 110 oh, degrees yeah. and uh but we go out to lake las vegas because which that ought to be a an episode uh when you hear about this so this this basically they built up this great little community out there that after the crash in 2008 completely you know condo prices plummeted like Things that they were selling for 1.4 million, they can now get maybe 400,000 for. And wow. so, I mean, it, and it's still that low, right? I mean, it crashed and has never recovered because it was all um, vacation properties. Like it wasn't where people lived because most okay. people like to live close to where they work, right? I mean, it's like 25, 30 minutes from the strip, like I said. So, most people don't want to live that far from from where they work, and that's where most of the jobs are in Vegas. But it's perfect when you want a vacation out there. So we go through uh, VRBO, we rent out a condo, and uh, and they're always just they're gorgeous, they're immaculate, and we're we're loving it because we're like the only family in the pool. Because most people there, it's for their second home. Uh, if it's not a second home and they actually live there, then they go to work during the day. So there's no one in the pool. I mean, we got the whole pool to ourselves with a view of the lake. I mean, if my kids were both fully swimming, we'd probably go do, you know, lake activities, boating, all that stuff, but they don't, so we don't, but still there's no one there. It's like the, this forgotten oasis of Las Vegas. And I love it. So we're driving back on Saturday and, um, now, I live in Southern California, so it's it's a four-hour drive out there and back. And about halfway between where we live and uh, in Las Vegas is a, a little town called Yermo, Yermo, California. In fact, I was telling uh, Dave right before we started recording this episode that I had to Google it real quick to see how big it is. And the latest stats are something like 1,750 people live in Yermo. So, I mean, this thing is so- tiny. You could blink on your way through and miss it, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's... Yeah. I kind of was like, I think it's just basically a gas stop that has a bunch of fast food. It's in the Mojave Desert, so it's 112 degrees. Why oh someone my. would choose to live there is beyond me, right? Like, who are these <laughs> 1,700 people who are living there and why? Except, apparently, there is a some sort of base. I don't know, army, whatever it is. Okay. Some military base there. And um, so anyway, we, we've 
we've always known of Yermo because for about, I don't know, 75 miles on either side of Yermo, you'll see all these billboards and uh, truck trailers that are parked on the side of the road that are never moving. I mean, they've been there for like 30 years, probably that say, you know, Peggy Sue's diner, 50s diner is coming up in Yermo, you know, 45 minutes, 25 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, next exit, get off here, turn right, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they're really ugly signs. They're literally just black background with white lettering. So, I mean, they're, they're ugly. There's no picture. <laughs> there's no like, here's the food. There, there's nothing like that, right? I mean, they're, they're ugly signs. And so we've never wanted to stop there. And uh, when you drive by it, though, you can see the restaurant off the side of the freeway, and you can see that they've built, I, I don't even know what to call it, some sort of like an amusement park with dinosaurs in it. And you can see this off the freeway. And you, it just is like this curiosity thing, like what in the world is this dinosaur thing at this 50s diner and you're like oh i bet you it's going to be the worst food i'm like that's what i'm thinking right so my wife and i were like you know what the kids are young four and seven years old they'd probably like to see this dinosaur thing even if it's just crap they're they're gonna like it why don't we stop there so you know we're coming back on saturday perfectly timed for us to stop so we can get lunch and as soon as I pull into the parking lot, the parking lot is packed. I mean, it's it's packed. Now, it's lunchtime, right? It's 1 o'clock. But there's other restaurants in this little town because it's, you know, it's you fill up with gas, get some food, and you hit the road again. But it's packed. And we go inside. And you can tell they've added on several different times. But... It is, it is the most amazing thing when we get in there. They have got celebrity pictures all over the walls from like every celebrity you can think of, autographed by the celebrity, Peggy Sue's Diner, we love you, right? All, all that type of stuff all over the walls. They've got almost like a, a wax museum type statue of Elvis that you can take a picture with. Um, when you go into the, the restroom, They've got this statue of a, a cowboy that looks like he's peeing into a urinal. I mean, they've added personality <laughs> like crazy into this place. And um, in fact, I, I mean, I kept taking pictures all over the place. They, they, have, uh, they have the only jeweled hamburger in Yermo, California. Like, and it literally is like this, the world's largest jeweled hamburger in Yermo, California, <laughs> or for Yermo, California, right? So it's not really the largest. That's wild. And it was just It was some made up thing that someone's like, hey, I'm going to come up with something that I can say we've got. And they like made a fake hamburger and bedazzled it with those fake jewels, right? And then yeah. stuck a plastic case over it and was like, okay, well, We've got this, and we're the only ones in Yermo, California. Well, you're like practically the only people in Yermo, California, right? <laughs> but it it was brilliant. And it, by the way, the wait staff were the absolute nicest wait staff I've ever met in my life, which I couldn't believe. Wow. I, I kind of didn't expect that either. And uh, average age of the the waitress was probably like seventy two, and the average age of the bussers was probably like I don't know thirty. Um, uh, but all of them, just the nicest people you'd ever meet. And the food was quick. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, phenomenal food, but it wasn't bad food. It wasn't what I was actually expecting. I was kind of thinking it was going to be horrible and it, it wasn't, it was, it was good food. And, uh, and then there's also on the table, there's like some little game. I don't even know what the name of it is, but like. It's one of those mind bender type games. So the kids are like playing with this thing. And, uh, and we're finally done. So we got our, our, our check. And, uh, and so I asked Leah, I said, Hey, you know, the, the dinosaur thing that we saw by the side of the freeway, I mean, I, I still didn't even know if you can get into it. Right. Cause as far as I know, everything's like, Oh, this was an idea we had years ago and closed it down. And the waitress was like, Oh, well, here's what's going to happen. Once you pay your, your bill, you should pay it at the register, not with the, the waitress. Um, they're going to give you uh, this tag and you take the tag down into our, uh, 
basically they got a shop with every tchotchke in the world you can imagine. Uh-huh. And they'll give you, uh, you know, uh, some free candy for everybody in the family. And then you can go out the back door into the, the dinosaur area. And I'm like, okay, this is brilliant, right? Because it, think about Disneyland, right? Where does Disneyland end their rides? They end them where you got to then walk through the shop and buy oh, all Oh, yeah, the- everybody does that. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, and so instead of giving you these, you know, Tootsie Rolls and peppermint candy and, you know, root beer candies at the table or even when you pay, it's, oh, here, take the tag over into our shop. We're going to make you actually walk the 20 feet over there. I mean, it was all indoors, not like it was far. It was all part of the same building, but we're going to make you walk over there because we're hoping your eye is going to catch on something and you're going to buy something. And people are doing it. They're buying stuff left and right. Then you see, oh, they've even got like a, uh, a, an ice cream shop where you can, you know, get a cone for the road, I guess. And I, I'm blown away by all this. And then I even see that stinking toy that was on every table. Of course, they got uh-huh. them all packaged so you can buy the toy as well. And I'm thinking, this is like brilliant marketing. Like, Did you did you spend more to get out of there? I didn't. <laughs> but, okay. But that was only because uh, okay. I didn't need any tchotchke <laughs> stuff. But other people <laughs> were doing it, right? Other people were buying the stuff and, and loading you, up on it. You needed the philosophy behind it. Yeah, I, I, I was just more fascinated by what was going on. Yeah. And then we go on. By what they were doing right. Yes. And I mean, I'm like sitting there looking at this going, this is a newsletter article. I got to write about this place because I never would have stopped there if it wasn't for the dinosaurs. And then we go in the back where the dinosaurs are and they've got like a waterfall and a pond. I mean, understand this is in the middle of the Mojave Desert. So. It's only because the the uh, land is probably so stinking cheap, right? Because no one in their <laughs> right mind would live there that they they're able to do all this stuff and build out all of this stuff. And but it was it was so cool. They even had like a little stage. I don't know if they put on anything uh, in the summer for like kids or whatever. I, I highly doubt they do because I mean, how do you do that when there's only seventeen hundred residents that live there? But Still, yeah, they, but I wonder they, how many. I wonder how many people go through there. A week. It had to be Just, a ton. Like, yeah, I was blown away at how packed that place was. And the, keep in mind, the only reason why we stopped there is because for years we've seen these ugly billboards on the side of the freeway telling us to stop. And they had this dinosaur thing that we could see, and we thought the kids would like it. Now I'm looking at it going, I actually would totally stop there even without the kids just because I kind of enjoyed it. Like, yeah, I, I just the people were cool, the marketing behind it. And like you, I'm a connoisseur of great marketing. Like, I, I just want to get ideas from everybody. Mm-hmm. And I, everything that they were doing right. And I'm sitting there looking at this thing going, how do you explain this to people? Like, this is what you do. And how does this person right, well, in Yerma, yeah. California, do it? And everyone else says, I can't do it. I can't think of anything. There's nothing unique about my business. Blah, 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 blah. And there's no, and there's no business. I don't know how to get business. Yeah, no, no. So let, let's, me. yeah, no one will come to me. Well, yeah, but let's, so let's go, let's go back to the beginning and just let's, and because this is a great example of any business can take. You know, and and I, you know, I, we were talking about this before. When I look at marketing, I like to see what other people are doing and seeing what works, because I know uh, that if ninety eight percent of the time in my own industry, I see what most people are doing, and they're not. I know it's not working. Right. But here, this is this is pretty cool. Let's just go over the things they did right. They had, they didn't have beautiful signs. Right. And it was not a one sign no. to, get, to get your attention. It was multiple. No. It There were a ton of signs. I mean, you know what? That, you bring up a good point. Next time I go out to Vegas, which will probably be later this year, I will count the signs that I see. Because um, what, I, what I think happened on the signage, like in, in this part of, of California, it, no one's out there. 
So I imagine they probably like paid one time to use a billboard and it never got taken away because no one else ever wanted to rent that billboard. Like, <laughs> right. And, and they've never changed it probably because they're like, Hey, you know, on the weekends we're packed. Cause you got to figure most of the people are stopping off. there are going back and forth from, uh, from Vegas and, and whatnot. Cause I mean, why else would you be there? And during the week, it's probably filled with people from the military who stop off there. So they've never really had to upgrade their signs. Now, if they had upgraded signs, I probably would have stopped earlier, but it wasn't necessary. Like their business right. is already doing well. It it wasn't a necessity to drive people to their business. They were just better than everyone else. Right. But it was multiple. So it wasn't just multiple. one. Yeah. Tons of. Yeah. Them. So so that was that was the step in the right. They did multiples, you know, and like you said, 50 miles, 25 miles, 10 miles, five miles. Whatever the case may be, so you know, it's it's. I remember Dan Kennedy once when he moved, he uh, he set up a uh, a table downstairs in his uh, basement, and for oh, and yeah. he kept track of all yeah. the people that marketed to him, and as a new there was only one out of the multiples that marketed to him on him buying a new house. There was only one that did it twice. Nobody did it three times. Yep. Yep, I, I totally and, remember and, that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so they did that right. They did. And here's an interesting, I think was pretty awesome. You said their waist, weight staff was extremely friendly. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. And 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 when you have a um, such a high turnover in business, where I would eventually guess that 50 to 60% of their business will maybe never go back or drive them through. They don't have to be nice. Right. But they are. Yeah. They leave that impression. Yeah. That they care. And um, so, and you know, that's one of my pet peeves is, you know, you can, uh, your, your co- the only thing your competition can't steal from you is the customer experience. Yes. It's actually one of the reasons that I totally think I would go back there and have no problem going back because the wait staff was really, really nice. Like I, I was kind of surprised by it. I was like, wow, these are some of the nicest wait staff people I've ever dealt with anywhere. And like I said, you know, they weren't spring chickens, right? I mean, they've been around the block. You, you got to think you're living in Yermo at, at that age. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you were could, born and raised there. <laughs> you could probably be pretty grumpy, right? Like, yeah, I mean, and as far as that, they, they, they were all 25. It was just 112 degrees when we were there. I mean, and it's got to be like that wow. most most every day. Yeah. So maybe they were a lot younger than they really look. Just the heat cooks it all out of them. Who knows? But they were they were really great staff. And I was like, yeah. even the 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 bussers, I was like, wow, man, I've. Like I don't get this at any other restaurant, at nice restaurants, and everyone here is is really nice. That's and, wild. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and the whole like uh, the bedazzled uh, hamburger thing. I bet you, at one time, they probably had as part of their billboard strategy. You know, come see the only jeweled hamburger in Yermo, California, or the you know world's biggest, or something like. Who knows? They, they probably had signs like that to help draw people in because there were so much of the things in this restaurant that I was like, okay, I bet you they use these as ways to get people here. And now at this point, they don't do that anymore. Uh, maybe because it wasn't worth the expense. Maybe because yeah, they're just so possibly. busy, it doesn't matter. But they never got rid of the stuff. I mean, it, it just it added personality to everything. And people are like taking pictures outside in front of the doors they're taking pictures inside they got like a betty page theme going in there where you can like buy tickets i don't know what you'd be buying tickets to but like you know a little ticket booth i mean this thing was packed with personality the the uh the store area with all the tchotchke stuff like Uh i said they had like everything you can imagine they had Stuff that I actually probably would have bought because it was Star Wars related, and I'm a big Star Wars guy. They had like okay. cookie jars with 
Chewbacca I had never seen before. I mean, they had just some of the craziest stuff. And so it kind of just made you want to go around and look at everything because you're like, look at all this stuff. I've never even seen half this stuff before. And and like I said, other people were buying stuff. I, I didn't buy anything, but who's to say I won't in the future? But they still so, wanted me so, to walk back there. So, you know, here's here's the right. ticket. You know, your bottom of your receipt, go get your free candy. And that made you walk back there to get it. So they followed you into um, extra sales. Yeah. Funnel this into the store. Get you in the store. Yeah. Oh. In the store for, for add-ons. So if you're a contractor, you think about what are some of the add-ons you can, you know, once you've created the experience, what are some of the, fun, the add-ons that you could do later, bring in at another yep. time or well, and see, that's, that's one of the things, too, that, that bothered me. And I mentioned this on one of our earlier podcasts when I had our patio roof installed. We had a lot uh-huh. more work done that we needed someone to come do. And that was a full service remodeling company that, that did this work for us. If their sales rep had just said, by the way, is there anything else that you're thinking about having done that we can get you a quote on, even if you don't want it done today, so at least you know uh, what you're looking at if you were to have us back. And they could have gotten more business from us. Like literally the next right. week after they were done, I had someone else out here doing it because they never asked. Like they didn't go for the upsell. They didn't just, you know, by the way, is there anything else? Yeah. You know, you're a painter. Yeah. Okay. You want us to do these three rooms? I get it. By the way, would you like a quote for the front room, the living room, and the kitchen? You know, for a later time. I understand you don't want it right now, but, you know, maybe you'd like it for later. T- you never know what will happen. Yeah, they may say, well, you know, I, yeah, I've had that happen. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and they'll say, well, we'll go ahead and do the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not as much as I thought it would be. Or, you know, gosh, yeah. you might as well just get the whole thing done at once. And, yeah, you know, let's just go ahead and just bite the bullet and pay for it. So, yeah, I mean, that was the beauty of this. And the thing is, see, because where you walked in, if you walk to the right, it's the restaurant area. If you walk to the left, it was the shop. And so they made you go to the shop because you could skip the shop. Like you didn't have to go through right. the shop to leave. But by saying, no, you, but know, you take, can't get your free candy. You if can't you get your free candy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's what. And I'm like, you know, literally, who was the brilliant mind who did this? Because I can't think of, you know, almost any business that will take these steps. Most people would just go, look, we're in Yermo. We, we are a gas station stop between Southern California and Vegas. So whatever we get, we get. And, you know, we're just going to be content with scraping by a, a meager living. Whoever owned this restaurant was like, I'm not content with scraping by. I'm going to do right. what it takes to get more people. I mean, we got thousands upon thousands of people driving by here every day, you know, to the point where at some point they built a, a dinosaur, you know, thing in the, the back that you can see from the freeway, which interestingly enough, they did have another shot back there. It was a dinosaur shop, but it wasn't open. And, and I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense to me. You know, maybe it was an idea, but you know, not enough people were buying stuff and it cost them more money to have someone run in that shop. Sure. Then, then once you build dinosaurs, what are you going to do with them? Yeah, leave them. You just leave them. I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah. part of me is like, what's their water bill? I mean, they got a waterfall wall in the pond in the middle of the oh, Mojave wow. Desert. I, I don't know. Maybe water's cheap there. Like, I always think of that when I'm thinking about Vegas. Like, where in the world is all this water coming from for the Bellagio? I'm like, I don't. I, don't. I know. Can, and in that heat, can you imagine how much it actually evaporates? I know, right? So, I, I don't. I mean,. It must be some sort of well water somewhere that they control because I would just think it would be expensive, but I don't know that. I mean, I don't live there. Obviously, yeah, someone else does. But, uh, but I mean, it was it was it was such good marketing. I mean, even the toy on the table, right? This little you know mind bending toy. I don't even know what it's called. And then I had to take a picture of it because in the shop they had a whole rack of them. <laughs> I'm like, that's stinking brilliant, right? Get you to play with it on the table. I mean, what did it cost him? Probably five bucks a table to put this toy on there. And it's probably been there for 20 years, right? 
They probably never have oh, to yeah. replace that. And yet people will play with it and then, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to buy one of those. Or I think, you know, little Johnny might like that. Or, oh, this will be a great gift. I'll give it to, to Sue and, and Marty. They'll, they'll really enjoy it. You know, and just all these opportunities to get more money from their their clients. They're taking advantage mm-hmm. of it. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Smart business. It's smart. So just it's being creative. It's in, in thinking about a lot of things. And, and, you know, they're thinking about getting more business, but I'm sure a lot of it had to do with just how can we create a customer experience to to not only get them there, they're there once. So how do we create that customer experience, which they do, to get them there again? But the u- uniqueness of this in today's market is like you did, and they everyone there was taking pictures of all the stuff, and they were probably posting it yeah. on Facebook. Exactly. So look at all that free advertisement that, that they were getting. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, and uh, you know it, it, it's funny because you look at almost every other business. So one of the 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 industries that I work a lot in, and you know this, Dave, is I work with a lot of real estate agents. And so one of the things that we do, and we talked about this on last week's episode with, or maybe it was the week before that, with consumer guides. And mm-hmm. so you know, I either teach real estate agents here's how you create your own consumer guide. Or um, we've got programs where we actually give it to them. Like we've got pre-made consumer guides that they can utilize. Sure. And that helps set them apart, right? Because everyone else, there's, there's no difference between one real estate agent and the next. I mean, there's not to the consumer. Every real estate agent can say, no. oh, there's a total difference, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, of course you say that. You're the real estate agent. But to the consumer, we look at you and we're like, you're all the same. Same thing with contractors. Whatever your niche you're in, painter, roofer, Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. We as a consumer look at you and go, you're no different than everyone else. It's so like a McDonald's hamburger. We become right. commodities unless we break out of that mold. Unless you break out. Yeah. And so what was right. funny is I can't tell you how many times I've gone out and done this, this uh, uh, you know, an, an event where I'm speaking publicly to, a, you know, a group of 300, 500, 1,000 agents, whatever it might be. And we'll offer one of our programs where we've got all these consumer guides pre-done for them. And so if they invest in the program, they get everything done and they can just plug and play. And I cannot tell you how many times I've had people come up to me and they go, well, you're, you're offering these consumer guides to everyone here. You know, if I'm offering them and the guy in my own office is also offering them, you know, I, I don't have any uniqueness. I, I'm not, you know, unique anymore. Everyone's got them. And I just look at them and like they're looking for an answer. Like, what's my answer to this? Everyone's got them now. And I look at him and I go, okay, so you want them to get all of the leads and you would get none of the leads? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> like, they're looking at it going, oh, well, someone else is doing this. And I'm looking at it going, you're out of your mind. First of all, most people don't actually take action. You and I know that, right? Well, that's what I was going to say. My, one of my questions would be, well, you have them and he has them, but who's using them? You're right. And, and secondly, there are literally millions of people out there, like literally millions of people. Like, yeah. In Southern California, for me, and now granted I'm in Southern California, but there's like 30 million people here. And in the whole state, I think we're up to like 40 or yeah, maybe 40, 45 million. I mean, it's ridiculous. So there's so many people. Do you really think that like all five of now, if you're in Yermo and you're using those guides, <laughs> you may, good you possibility. May, you may have top to, yeah, yeah you, you might have some competition. You might need to rethink your strategy, change the cover, slap a new title on it. I don't know what, right? <laughs> but outside of Yermo, and by the way, I don't know how you'd make a living as a contractor in Yermo. I, I really think you need to move. If that's too hot, crazy. man. Dude, it's right? just too hot. Who does that? Who lives there in their right mind? But, um, but, but you can't like because somebody's going to hear this and go, "Well, you know what? I'm a painter. You know, I, I, I can't have the the world's you know bedazzled hamburger. Well, why not? <laughs> you know, I mean, wh- why can't you do funny, crazy stuff like that? You know, we talked about how um, that contractor who did the patio cover. The first thing they made us do was come to their their office, their showroom. Like they wouldn't come to us to give us a quote. They made right. us go to them. 
And then they took us around the whole thing, you know, showing us all the different patio covers and everything else that they had there. I mean, they did that same idea because no one else was doing it around us. Everyone else was, oh, you know, we'll come out there. We'll show you some pictures, give you some quotes. You know, that, yeah. that was how they did business. They made an experience for us and made us go through it. And it's same thing right. with that restaurant and same thing with our listeners. They can take that same idea and go, okay, what's the experience I can come up with? How can I steal can some of these unique, ideas? Unique. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 there was, there's two, there was uh, a painter I read about that, um, paint with a tuxedo. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And, um, but and then there was another painter who sprayed everything, literally sprayed everything. And people would stay home from work to watch him tape everything up and, and, and you know, cover everything and just and then and then watch him spray the house out. He didn't use a brush. He didn't use a roller. He sprayed everything. And it was just unique because literally people would stay home from work to watch him. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. don't tell me you can't be unique. You know, you can do, you can be, I, there's, I, there's, um, there's another one. I think there's, uh, we've got plumbers in my area. I see their, their little card. Uh, they, you know, the work talks in the top hat. Well, you know, what, what's funny is, uh, what, <sighs> I remember looking at this one guy's, it was a financial planner. I was looking at his marketing and I think I, I got his marketing somehow through something I invested in with Dan Kennedy. Okay. So and I, I don't remember which one it was, but it was a financial planner. And so they would send a limo to you to pick you up and bring you to their office for your appointments. And Sweet. Th- that was like part of the experience. Like, you could do that today easier than what they did back then because you could just do, you know, Uber black, right? Send an Uber black to them, which is a, I think What's that's the that? high end Uber. I'm not even sure. Cause it's the high end. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know a real estate agent here that was doing <clears throat> something, excuse me, something similar. He would take, he would have, uh, have his clients picked up in a Bentley. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, and take, and take him to look at the houses, but you know, these were multi-million dollar houses. Which but still give them that kind of an experience. And who are you going to go with the guy who's like trudging you around in your Toyota or the guy who's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to spring for a Bentley. You know what? I'm it's not going to cost me any different. So I'm going with the guy who's going to drive me around in a Bentley. Like that's just the deal. So, yeah. and but everyone could do that too. You know, you can't get someone to your showroom. Why don't you spring for Uber black and drive them there? And you could take them around. Let me show you what we do over here with, you know, whatever form of contracting they're in. I mean, again, well, it's that experience. I remember remember back when, you know, the 2000s, 2005, 6, 7, uh, one of Dan Kennedy's uh, mortgage brokers, he would uh, actually send a DVD player in the mail mm. with his DVD to make sure that they saw it. It was yeah. preloaded and everything. All they do is plug it in and hit play. Yeah. I've done that uh, with technology being as cheap as it is. You can get uh, some of those Android tablets for like, I mean, 20, 30 bucks. Like some of them are that cheap. And you can preload your video on there and then put instructions that just say, hey, double tap the video when you get this and uh, keep the, the tablet as my gift to you. And it makes a huge impact on people. Let's say you're a roofer, right? I mean, you're going to make anywhere from 10 to 20, 25,000, depending on the, the roof in your area. Um, yeah. Why not send a, a, a tablet with a video on it? You know, by the way, this is this type of roof. And we did this over here. And, you know, here's Bob and Mary. And here's what they had to say. And, you know, have your testimonials on there. No one else is doing that. I mean, I'm going to take that guy way more seriously than the other guy. Because again, the biggest know, thing that, that people yeah. are dealing with is they don't trust contractors because of their experiences that they've had, that their friends have had. So when you stand yeah. out, when you do this stuff, 
you're showing everyone I'm not like everyone else. I care about my business. I am unique. That's why you want to work with me. So uh, about being unique, the other day I got a, uh, it's actually got a job by texting, which is kind of rare. Um, I did I did an estimate on a lady, and she she said, "Oh, I got it." And then I says, "She says I got it," but she didn't say anything after that. I says, "Okay, I'm great. You got it. Is there, did you want to schedule us to come and do it?" And then we we did a, a banter back and forth with texting, and uh, ultimately it I got the job, and here's the reason I got the job is because the other, I had actually measured her roof uh, to clean it. And, um, and I sent her the picture of the measurement from Google Earth, you know, from Google. So oh, nice. you can measure it and send it. So it said it was 8,800 square feet. So she said the other, other roofer, other guy came in and it was, he said it was 6,000 square feet. And I go, I said, the only thing I can tell you is he guessed, he guessed it because I said, I sent you a picture of the actual measurement. And I said, I can't, I can't, you know, jack that up or anything like that. So, so that's where I got mine from. Uh, so, this, <laughs> so I was about six or seven hundred dollars higher. Okay. And by the time we got through, and by the time we got through, she goes, "I'm, I'm just going to go with you." Yeah. I just, I'm afraid that if if he just guessed, and by and when he gets up to him, does the work, he comes down and says, "You know what? It's going to cost you more because I didn't figure it right." She right. says, "You gave me everything, you know, in order the way it should be done. You gave me the, and, and explained how it was done, and I'm just going to go with you." So it was like, I don't know. Uh, like $1,900 to clean this lady's roof. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was the uh, that was the story that I wanted to share because I was so impressed with that uh, that restaurant that I'll probably actually so stop just, there again. <laughs> like, I have every yeah, intention yeah. of stopping there again. <laughs> Take pictures. We'll put it up on the website next I time. I know. There. There you go. And, and for all you guys that are listening, if you had uh, – when we talked about the um, – the I, we put a template up for your if you need one for your uh, free reports yeah on how to make one yep so it's up on that website it's up on the website I don't know how Travis did it but it's, it should be up there somewhere yeah perfect well Dave thanks so much again for doing a, a yep. great podcast and uh, everyone we will uh, be talking with you next week take care everyone awesome. Bye.